As of July 2025, India has maintained a cautious and deliberate distance from engaging in any negotiations or formal interest regarding Russia's Su-57E stealth fighter. The Su-57E is the export version of the Su-57, Russia's first fifth-generation combat aircraft, and has been offered to India repeatedly since the termination of the joint FGFA, fifth-generation fighter aircraft program. That original collaboration was based on the POC FA platform, which later evolved into the Su-57, but India withdrew in 2018 due to multiple technical, operational, and programmatic concerns. Following the withdrawal, Russian officials have made various high-profile statements offering India significant concessions, including local production rights, access to full software source code, radar customization, and joint integration of Indian avionics and weaponry. These offers are viewed by many defense analysts as an attempt to revive export credibility for the Su-57E program, which to date has failed to secure any foreign buyer. Indian decision-makers have remained publicly and operationally silent on these proposals. There has been no issuance of a request for proposal RFP, no expression of acceptance of necessity Aon, no budgetary allocation in India's defense capital expenditure plan, and no technical evaluations initiated through the Ministry of Defense. Official statements from Indian Air Force representatives have reinforced the position that the current procurement strategy is focused on operational readiness, modernization of legacy fleets, and the development of indigenous fifth-generation platforms. This has led to the understanding that India is not presently considering the Su-57E or any other foreign fifth-generation aircraft as a near-term procurement option. The underlying reasons for India's disinterest are complex and rooted in a combination of technical drawbacks, production uncertainties, reliability concerns, and strategic calculation. One of the critical limitations of the Su-57, even in its latest variants, lies in its reduced stealth performance compared to peer fifth-generation platforms. Independent evaluations by military analysts and think tanks have concluded that the aircraft's radar cross-section is significantly higher than those of leading stealth aircraft due to its structural features. Exposed engine nozzles, inconsistent shaping across the airframe, and incomplete use of radar-absorbing coatings contribute to a less-than-optimal signature management profile. Furthermore, the aircraft continues to rely primarily on the AL-41 F1 engine, a refined version of a fourth-generation powerplant, which lacks full supercruise capability and generates a significant infrared signature. The more advanced Isdeli A30 engine, developed specifically to bring the Su-57 closer to fifth-generation propulsion standards, has suffered long development delays and remains under limited testing. This uncertainty about its readiness timeline creates a risk factor for any prospective buyer who might depend on timely availability of performance upgrades. India, which has historically placed high emphasis on self-reliance and long-term logistical sustainability, views the dependency on uncertain propulsion systems as a vulnerability. Additionally, India's past experiences with joint defense development programs have made it wary of unbalanced partnerships. In the case of the Su-57E offer, while Russia has pledged an unprecedented degree of access and co-development freedom, the actual delivery of such commitments remains unproven. India's departure from the original FGFA program was due in part to lack of transparency, inadequate access to technical documentation, and dissatisfaction with the limited design autonomy. Provided, operational reliability and support infrastructure represent another serious concern. The Su-57 remains in low-rate serial production in Russia, with fewer than 25 aircraft inducted into its own air force as of mid-2025. Although Russia has stated plans to induct up to 76 units by the end of the decade, production has faced continuous delays due to industrial constraints, material shortages, and the impact of international sanctions. These sanctions have significantly degraded the ability of the Russian defense industry to import critical subsystems and microelectronics from global markets. Many advanced components that were once sourced from Western or East Asian suppliers are no longer available to Russian manufacturers, forcing substitutions that have affected performance consistency and delivery timelines. This context has not gone unnoticed by Indian strategic planners. A fifth-generation aircraft is not only a frontline asset but also a platform that requires continuous upgrades, maintenance support, and a secure supply chain for decades. The uncertainty created by ongoing sanctions and geopolitical isolation of Russia introduces potential long-term risk for India's operational readiness should it adopt the Su-57E. India has previously experienced similar disruptions with other foreign defense equipment due to export controls, regulatory complications, or geopolitical shifts. Another key factor is India's broader strategic doctrine and its industrial roadmap. 
India has committed to a long-term indigenous aircraft development program that includes the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft AMCA, which is being designed domestically by the Aeronautical Development Agency ADA, and produced in collaboration with Hindustan Aeronautics Limited HAL. This program is intended to deliver an Indian fifth-generation stealth fighter tailored to national security requirements and local terrain considerations. The AMCA project has received increased funding and political support, with its first prototype projected to fly later in the decade. While it is still early in its development, the technological base and digital design tools being used are expected to reduce development delays seen in past Indian programs. Choosing to acquire the Su-57E at this stage would be interpreted by many as an implicit admission that India has limited confidence in its own fifth-generation program. It would also risk diverting scarce funding and engineering resources away from AMCA and other indigenous initiatives. Additionally, operating two competing fifth-generation platforms, one foreign and one domestic, would introduce complexity in terms of infrastructure, pilot training, spare part logistics, and combat doctrine alignment. These complications are weighed seriously by the Indian Air Force, which seeks streamlined operations and interoperability across fleets. Media coverage and defense reporting in India have also reflected widespread skepticism toward the Su-57. Over the past several years, various reports have highlighted problems with onboard avionics integration, software lags, weapons compatibility issues, and questions about airframe durability under high-G maneuvering. While Russia has made efforts to demonstrate the Su-57's battlefield relevance through limited deployments and media demonstrations, the evidence provided has not been sufficient to overcome the perception that the aircraft remains a transitional platform rather than a matured fifth-generation solution. There is also the matter of comparative absence of international validation. No major air force globally has procured the Su-57E. Although countries such as Algeria and Vietnam have been mentioned in speculative discussions, no official contract or deliveries have taken place. In the absence of third-party operational validation, the aircraft remains a domestically used system with limited demonstrated export credibility. This is a serious limitation for India, which typically seeks to acquire systems that have undergone extensive operational exposure or are backed by well-established support networks. Given all these considerations, the probability of India engaging in a Su-57E acquisition remains extremely low. While Russia may continue to promote the platform in public forums and diplomatic channels, India's defense procurement direction appears firmly aligned with self-reliance, risk mitigation, and long-term strategic autonomy. The Su-57E, despite upgrades and offers of customization, does not align with those core requirements as of now. The gaps in technology readiness, industrial predictability, and geopolitical stability continue to outweigh any short-term gains in platform availability or co-production. This situation is unlikely to change unless the Su-57E demonstrates significant improvements in stealth performance, engine capability, production scale, and export success. Until then, India will continue to monitor developments without engagement, while advancing its own fifth-generation efforts under the AMCA program and parallel unmanned combat aircraft initiatives.